The universe itself is the astrophotographer's playground. If it's out there, it's in, in the competition. We've got the Orion Nebula, we've got the Andromeda Galaxy, we've got the Eagle Nebula, we've got the Rosette Nebula, we've got moon pictures, we've got amazing pictures of the sun. We've got aurora uh, of, of all different sorts. We've got skyscapes, so loads of sort of interesting uh, landscapes along with the, the astronomical phenomenon. We've got globular clusters, very wide selection of stuff to come and look at. It's about bringing the universe sort of really bam in front of people. I'm Dr. Ed Bloomer. I'm one of the astronomers at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. We're here at the Astronomy Photography of the Year Gallery, uh, which is home to the best astrophotography in the world. Bluntly, it's about space. It's sort of space photography, but within that, there's such a depth uh, to the sort of skills you might need to, uh, to develop in particular areas. Uh, and, and, and that's what keeps the competition going. For example, the solar astrophotography, that's when you're taking pictures of the sun. Uh, you've got a lot of light there, so filtering is very, very important because sunspots, because solar flares, it's quite different from, say, deep space photography, where you're looking at potentially very, very dim sources, long exposure times, nebulae, star clusters, things like that. Different, again, from, say, skyscapes, where we're trying to uh, involve the landscape but also the sky, uh, so certain weather patterns, but also how the night sky interacts with the environment. Aurora, different once again. You've got a, a phenomena there that's very difficult to capture, uh, but there's lots of variety within it. Not just color, but it's a sort of changing uh, that thing. You might involve the landscape, you might not. We also have astrophotographers that are capturing not just something that looks beautiful or that looks really enticing, but in fact, shows you actually important information and indeed certainly in this year's competition there's some new stuff. In the winning image we've got this doubly ionized oxygen region. We don't really know what's going on there, we can sort of characterize it in a way now, but what's really going on there, we're now in the process of investigating that. We've got that odd mix of the aesthetics, the artistic side of things, but also that hard science as well. So the winning image for the Animondo Prize for Image Innovation. This is a picture of audio being played through water. So we're seeing uh, patterns in the water caused by the vibrations of the speaker. The speaker is playing audio, which has been frequency shifted from X-ray uh, data in a distant pulsar. So it's a sort of visualization of audio that the human ear couldn't hear anyway in non-visual data. <laughs> Dark Star by Peter Ward, a picture of the sun, but he has warped it uh, so that it looks like you're sort of looking inwards into a tunnel. What you see is all the flares coming off the sun are coming into the middle of the picture. So all of a sudden, instead of looking around the edge of the sun, what you're actually doing is looking into a central spot and you can sort of see all the activity. With just sort of one little twist, you sort of see it again in a new way. There's also Mars set uh, by Ethan Chapel. This is where we have the occultation of Mars by the moon. And what that means is um, this very close-up picture of essentially the moon with Mars in the background makes it look as if you're on the moon itself and Mars is sort of either setting or kind of rising depending on how you think about it. So it, it sort of puts you into this alien landscape without actually leaving the Earth. One of the images I really love is by Angel An uh, from China. Uh, it's Grand Cosmic Fireworks, and this is a, a, an image of red sprites. It's because it's so high up in the atmosphere, the scaling doesn't look quite right with the landscape, or it doesn't look like what you imagine it should. It draws the eye, it's really enticing, and so it looks like a kind of weird alien jellyfish is kind of reaching down. It's very, it's very weird, but it absolutely pulls visitors in. Another highlight is the Running Chicken Nebula by Runway Zoo and Binyu Wang. This is the winner of the Young category. It's astonishing. Uh, these photographers were 14 uh, when they took the picture. Just a beautiful nebula image. The balancing, the processing, the, it, it's so mature. I mean, it's just a beautiful picture anyway, but the fact that it's from young entrants is absolutely phenomenal. We were, we were really blown away by this. Awe and wonder is one of the things that the, the, the visitors get. I, I think, you know, looking into these often vast or vastly distant uh, objects and, and sort of being overwhelmed by the, the, the sort of the clarity that we can bring to them. The, they, they are incredibly colorful, many of them. Uh, just seeing that, that detail and really, um, maybe a bit of a cliche, but sort of bringing it to life a bit more. It, it's about bringing the universe sort of really 
bam, in front of people. And I think, I think that's one of the things they really like.